Yeah, cool. So anyway, welcome. Yes, we're here. We're here to cover what are we doing today? We're talking about imposter syndrome, uh, tapping into your natural confidence. And um, I know I know uh, most of you here, but just to give a little bit of background, my name is Chris Lemig. Uh, I work um, here at True Nature Hypnotherapy, which is my private practice uh, out of Seattle, but I help people really all over the country, all over the world um, uh, access, uh, you know, subconscious um, uh, resources within themselves to make positive changes for themselves. So um, a little bit about me uh, and my hypnotic journey. I have, um, uh, I'm 52 years old and I have narrowed it down to a three sentence or a three line biography. So that way I don't have to spend a whole lot of time, you know, writing out my memoir. So I was a drunk, I became a monk. Now I do hypnosis. Um, prior to 2007, that's not a real picture of me, by the way, but prior to 2007, I did have a pretty nasty, you know, drinking habit and, you know, other things as well. Um, a lot of self-inflicted misery, a lot of suffering that I experienced. Uh, mm -hmm. In 2007, I wound up getting clean and sober, became one of the lucky ones. And I stumbled across uh, this thing called Buddhism, especially uh, Tibetan Buddhism, and uh, wound up becoming enamored with it and really dove in head first, uh, spent a lot of time over in India, and eventually I became a monastic, an ordained uh, monk. I spent about two years doing that, um, studying Buddhist philosophy, Tibetan language, uh, Tibetan Buddhist ritual, um, uh, just e the Eastern philosophical and spiritual technologies. Um, when I came back to the United States in 2006, I basically I returned my ordination uh, and became a lay person again, it's called. And, uh, and then I wandered my way into or very serendipitously, I say wandered, but I think all of this has been, um, uh, you know, synchronistic, you know, so uh, I found hypnosis and I wound up training with a guy uh, who also had a Buddhist background and an Eastern spiritual uh, background and had uh, melded these things together, the, the scientific knowledge of the mind and hypnotic techniques, and these uh, very ancient um, truths about the human mind and the human condition, our spiritual condition. And so what I've basically done is I've taken these together and what I've learned from, you know, other, other hypnotists and, and other great, um, uh, you know, spiritual masters, and I've synthesized this into a uh, program of hypnosis and um, spirituality that really supercharges, um, you know, change and growth and learning uh, for people. So um, my pathway to confidence hypnosis program is that synthesis of those two things, right? So the, the ancient Eastern ideas and, and philosophies and, and view, and then the, uh, the, the hypnosis. And basically what we do is, you know, we walk people through a process of, of recognizing your true self, um, recognizing that true, whole, complete being that you already are and tapping into that, letting all the junk drop and just being yourself, being your true self so that you can do, you know, uh, find and discover your own true inner guidance, you know, that trusted inner guidance that can help you navigate through, you know, just about any situation, in fact, knows you so thoroughly and through and through that really can give you, you know, nitty gritty advice about how to handle any situation. And then we, you know, kind of walk through a process of releasing all the junk that we don't need, reimagining some new stuff. I've talked to a lot of you about this already. So this is kind of review, but then reprogramming our subconscious mind for just more success, more happiness, more joy, more gratitude, humility, all these wonderful things. So people ask oftentimes like, what is hypnosis? And, you know, if you ask any given hypnotist or hypnotherapist on the street, they're going to give you a variety of answers. You know, each individual is going to give you their own individual advanced answer as to what is hypnosis, what is hypnotherapy. And the thing is, is that, you know, nobody really knows what hypnosis is. And, and there's still a lot of debate about, is it a state or is it, um, is it just something else? Is it, uh, is it just a suggestible sort of, uh, you know, condition that we uh, get ourselves into? What I believe, and this is my definition of it, is that hypnotherapy is just simply the redirection of your powerful subconscious mind and your imagination to generate positive emotional lifestyle and spiritual changes in your life. 
So it doesn't require any special skill on your part. It doesn't require any you know, susceptibility to uh, hypnotic suggestions. It doesn't require you to do anything at all because all we're doing is we're tapping into your powerful subconscious mind, your imagination, that's actually already creating both the problems and the solutions in your life right now. That powerful subconscious mind of yours and the imagination is already generating your emotional states right now. It's already generating lifestyle habits, and it's already influencing your sort of your spiritual condition moment by moment. So all we're doing, again, is we're tapping into your natural power of your subconscious mind and your imagination and redirecting that to generate positive changes for yourself. And that's really all that it's about. So let's dive in. What is imposter syndrome? Um, imposter syndrome, let's be honest, let's call it out here, uh, is just a made-up word. It's a made-up term. Um, it was uh, something that was a phrase that was coined back in the 70s to describe a general sense of people just feeling, uh, you know, doubting their, their abilities and, and just kind of feeling like no matter how well they're doing, they feel like a fake or a fraud, right? So these are just some of the, um, the, the different qualities or the different characteristics or, or types of thoughts and feelings that come up that might indicate that we quote unquote have this thing called imposter syndrome. But let me be very clear that we can't have this because it's not really a thing. It's just a collection of thoughts and feelings. So feeling like a fake or a fraud, that feeling of like, hey, I'm doing, no matter how well you're doing, right? You might be super successful. You might have all the, the accoutrement of success. Um, you know, um, things might be going really well for you. And yet you still feel like, oh my God, but if anybody knew, they'd know that I don't know what the F I'm doing, right? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm a fake. I'm a fraud. Mm -hmm. Doubt your basic abilities, doubting that I've known people who are super amazing at what they do. They're fantastic writers. They're great leaders. They're, you know, excellent at, you know, managing projects. Uh, you know, they own their own companies and yet they doubt their abilities moment by moment. They're like, I'm just winging it, right? I don't know what I'm doing. On top of that, people who experience imposter syndrome might feel like they're just they're, they're overly concerned with what other people think. So worrying about other people's opinions of them, and that can be painful and debilitating. Um, one of the characteristics that's really common is just difficulty celebrating successes, right? So having a hard time just acknowledging that, yeah, I am successful. I've done some amazing things. I've accomplished some wonderful things. I've learned some amazing things. People who experience imposter syndrome find that difficult sometimes. Yeah, or you never even try. That's right, Paula. Exactly. Um, and then finally, or this isn't a, a you know an exhaustive list, by the way, but it's just a few things that I jotted down. But one thing that's really common is just the inability or finding it difficult to receive feedback from people. And it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative feedback. If it's positive feedback, I don't know if you've experienced this, but that's sort of that maybe blushing feeling of like, oh, no, no, don't don't give me a compliment. You know, God forbid I sh you should give me a compliment because I don't feel I deserve it. Right. So that discomfort that's felt uh, because of that or the negative feedback, you know, feeling like it becomes like an attack on one's integrity and basic, you know, integrity of, of their being. So um, so these are just some of the, the various qualities of uh, of imposter syndrome. Um, oops, let's go back here. So what really causes imposter syndrome? I've actually got some blog posts out there and I've um, even probably some videos too where I talk about the causes of imposter syndrome and some of the causes might be trauma and abuse, neglect, all these sorts of things. But really I'm, I'm reframing that more and more as I learn more about this, this process and, and what it is that we're talking about here. Contrary to what you might think, imposter syndrome is a not caused by those early experiences of trauma or abuse, neglect, bullying, overparenting, any sort of negative childhood experience that might somehow contribute to one's sense of identity. That's not really the cause, right? I mean, these things can certainly influence our experience. They can influence you know, how we feel about ourselves, and they might even influence some habitual ways of thinking and being but they're not the cause. So the root 
the root cause of imposter syndrome is actually our thoughts and our feelings in the present right now. And more specifically, it's the belief that those thoughts and those feelings are somehow absolutely real and true. So I don't know how many of you have ever questioned the validity of your thoughts and your feelings or really examined them. In meditation practice, mm. the, the Buddhist tradition and uh, you know the sort of the Eastern traditions, um, we're very, very interested in thoughts, the nature of thoughts, the nature of the inner experience. In fact, the Tibetan word for Buddhist is nangpa, which means one who goes within, one who looks within. And we're curious about like what's really going on here. Because I know before I first, before I started to really kind of examine what are thoughts, what are feelings, man, I could get caught up in a shitty feeling for days. Whether it was an argument I was having with someone or something somebody said that rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, a criticism I received that I took super personally. These things would just run rampant in my body and my mind. And I just couldn't seem to let them go because I was just chasing after them. I was not questioning them. I was just simply accepting their, their truth and their validity and their reality without any question. So when we do this, when we believe in these thoughts and these feelings without really examining them and looking at them, they can and do feel true and real. But the truth of the matter is, is that um, they're not. And I invite you even right now to, to look at a thought. So just take a moment and you can close your eyes or not or whatever, but just you know, kind of examine, look, look at a thought, whatever thought's coming up, whatever feeling is coming up and try to find it. Try to single it out, identify its size, its shape, its location, its color, its weight. And if you can do that, if you absolutely can do that, I'd like you to send it to me in an envelope or a package or a box. Because if we could find these things as being real, that's what we would find. We'd find something that was real, something that we could point to, something that we could isolate out. But thoughts and feelings, they're, they're just illusory. They're like illusions and dreams. What's your experience of that? When, as you're kind of, uh, I don't want you to just kind of take what I'm saying and say like, oh yeah, you know, whatever, dude. <laughs> but I would like to know what's, what's your experience of that? What do you think about that? And anybody can kind of jump in or chime in or you know, put something in the chat if you like. I, I definitely had a thought come up. It's one that's come up for a really long time for me. And um, the thought is I am ugly. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, a lot of them, but then I kind of really tried to, to see where it is, and I think it's, it's pretty permeated, so I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feel like it's a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just imagined a kind of botanical, floral, like they're just all like hanging out and flowering and mm -hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not yeah. positive at all. But, you know, I, so I just cut them all up and dried them really quick and put them in a box and sent them your way. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll be looking for them. <laughs> and I, I want to be, I want to be make, and thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that because, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not an experience that's happening. I'm not saying we're not experiencing something. Not saying that this is it's uh, you know we're not thinking or we're not having uh, having a you know going through a feeling. It's just that these thoughts and these feelings they don't have any substantiality to them. 
there's no, again, there's no kind of weight to them. There's nothing that you can point to and say, like, this is that thought. And you may sort of have a general feeling or a complex of thoughts that are coming, um, that are recurring and keep coming back, but they're not, you know, they're not any specifically one thing. And as you experienced there, you were able, and you're getting ahead of me here, uh, as you experienced there, you were able to actually change those thoughts. And you were able to, like you say, like sort of like cut them up and put them in a box and send them to me. So you have some agency over them because of the fact that they're not solid, that they're not true, absolutely, that they don't have an absolute existence to them. So it's just something that I invite you to, to think about and to experience for yourself. And when you first start doing it, it seems a little bit weird, you know, because we're not, we're not usually thinking in these terms because we're so conditioned to just accept that, yeah, my thoughts are real. My feelings are real. You know, they just exist. They make me who I am. I think therefore I am, right? That's our whole like philosophical Western cultural foundation. But I'm saying that let's challenge that. Let's examine that. Let's examine what's really, what is the contents of our mind? Are these things fixed? Do they have as much power as we think? Because the truth of the matter is, is that we're all just making this shit up. As is evidenced by, you know, noticing a, a kind of a recurring thought and then being able to change the qualities of it, maybe even changing the colors, changing what you're seeing, the images and the feelings and have some influence over it. You're exercising your imagination to make stuff up and to alter things as you see fit. So at the end of the day, everything that we're experiencing, and this is the fundamental, this is the foundation of Buddhist thought and Eastern philosophical thought about the nature of reality. And it's also becoming understood by uh, modern quantum physics and mechanics. We are literally making up our reality as we go. It's our consciousness, it's our imagination, the observer. The phenomenon doesn't exist until it's observed. So, I want to give you a little example of this. And again, I don't want you to just accept this. I want you to think about it and experience it and, you know, check it out. See if it's, see if it makes sense or not. If we're all making this shit up, go ahead and put your hand out in front of you, put it out like this. So you're kind of like, you know, looking at it now, look down at your hand. Now imagine, imagine now that there is a filthy, disgusting, the worst, stinky, wretched, dirty diaper that you've ever seen in your life sitting there on the palm of your hand and you can feel the weight of it and maybe even a little bit of the warmth of it and you can smell the odor of it and just start to bring it up to your face bringing it up to your face and just oh, as it comes closer to your face just noticing what you're feeling and experiencing in your body maybe even stick out your tongue as you're about to oh no okay stop stop go ahead release that now now, I don't know about you, but that exercise turns my stomach a little bit, you know? Our imagination is very powerful. Did anybody else experience a little bit of revulsion there? Yeah, yeah. A little bit of like, ugh, that's, that's really gross. No, I do not mm -hmm. want that yep. close to my face. Yeah, I don't want that close to my face. I don't wanna, of course I don't wanna, you know, lick it, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Look at your hand again. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's no diaper. There's no, there's no baby poop. We just made that up. And the thing is, is that the, our brains, our nervous system reacts to thoughts. Our brains and our nervous system don't recognize that the thoughts aren't necessarily real. The brain doesn't know the difference between an imaginary diaper and a real diaper in our hand. It will start to react, or it will actually cause our brain to start to react as if there is actually that nasty, disgusting thing in our palm of our hand, right? 
The fact of the matter is, is that our brains are actually the intermediary between our consciousness, our non-local um, consciousness and intelligence, our pure being, and the physical world that we live in, the three-dimensional world. So their thoughts influence the brain. The brain's the intermediary that then influences the body, and then we are able to interact with this three-dimensional world. And it doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's made up. So again, this is something that we cover a lot in, in the Pathway to Confidence program. We're, we're investigating the mind. We're looking at where is my power, right? What am I creating? What am I responsible for? And what can I change? And the thing is, is that as long as we are doing this, making this shit up, why not make up something wonderful? I mean, really, if we're already making up these ideas in our head about, you know, whether or not we're valuable or worthy, because it's no difference than the poopy diaper on our hand, right? It's the same, it's, it's no, there's no difference in the quality of those thoughts, the essence of those thoughts. The shitty thought of like, I'm not valuable, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm a fake, I'm a fraud. It might have different, like, you know, it might appear to us in different ways, but it's no difference in its essence to the shitty diaper. And so if we're already making that shit up, why not make up something wonderful? And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of our time here today. I want you to come away from this experience with a little bit of a taste of how powerful your mind is and how powerful your imagination is to create positive change. Because if you can create negative shit in your life, it stands to reason that we can also generate positive change. So as long as you're in a comfortable and safe place, try this exercise. You know, just close your eyes. Close your eyes and just allow yourself, your powerful subconscious mind, your powerful imagination, to imagine yourself now, only imagine it now, being in a powerful place, a magical place, a mystical place, a place that's just for you. This place could be anywhere at all, but this powerful, magical, mystical place is a place where you can generate powerful, positive feelings, emotions, images, thoughts, and experiences. Really be there in this powerful, positive, mystical, magical place, a place that's just for you. Imagine it happening. Only imagine it happening. Now, as you experience all the details of this place with your senses, seeing the sights and hearing the sounds, feeling the sensations of this mystical, mm -hmm. magical, powerful, and wonderful place. Allow those feelings to course through your whole body and being. Allowing any tension or any pressure to begin to release or let go. And while you're in this powerful place, this magical, mystical, wonderful place, allowing yourself to experience something new. And I don't know what you're going to experience that's going to be interesting and useful. That's right. allowing it to happen as you just experience this powerful place, this magical place. It's just for you. And on the count of three, just open your eyes, coming all the way back. 
all the way back to normal waking consciousness as we continue this learning as you come back to full waking consciousness and absorb and apply and act upon all this new learning for your highest benefit and your highest good number one starting to come back number two coming back all the way number three open your eyes all the way back that's right all the way back wonderful And as you kind of just reflect on that experience, if, if anyone wants to share, you know, what that experience was like for them, you, you can. And sometimes it can be a personal thing, so you don't, you don't have to, but this is a safe place and a safe space. So if you like to share something, that would be great. So, uh, Chris, this is, I had said I have this spot in my head that um, seems to freeze up. So I feel like I can't count on staying present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my that very brief meditation was actually went back to a meditation retreat mm -hmm. or, and the energy that you want you know was available there and um right right kind of lifted it kind of lifted lifted up enough so i could kind of work around it and just kind of focus on not what wasn't happening in me but mm -hmm. the person i'm talking to or mm -hmm. the situation i'm in just getting out of my head so right. to speak right so that was very lovely very nice i appreciate it wonderful thank you wonderful sure sure yeah, and that's, you know, it's just a, it's just a little, you know, it's a little taste, a little taste of what our, our minds are capable of, you know, um, we can generate and experience, you know, a positive place. And it can be something that we make up, can be something that just comes to us, someplace that we've gone before or want to go, just a place where we feel good and safe and peaceful and calm and all these sorts of things and have these resources available to us and in the same way that you know we kind of did that exercise with the the you know the, the negative thing right the dirty diaper we can do this we can again do this with imagining enjoyable things and encouraging things and things that we um, find to be supportive and our bodies will respond in kind right in accordance with those thoughts, feelings, and internal experiences. So, um, and again, it's sort of like, you know, if you imagine yourself in a time in the, sometime in the past where you were having a really great time, right? Maybe you're with a bunch of friends or you were at a party or as a birthday party when you were a kid or, you know, you know, anything, anything where you were really just having a great time, maybe knocking it out of the park, doing something really great. And if you go back there and you really allow yourself to re-experience those feelings and sensations and sounds and smells, you start to feel as if you're there. And again, it's because the mind doesn't know the difference. The brain doesn't know the difference between thoughts and reality, quote unquote, right? So that's what we want to leverage, that power, so we can generate positive things for ourselves, positive changes. So... I want to build on this a little bit here, and I want to share with you this exercise. Um, it's an NLP technique. Uh, it's a classic sort of NLP using the imagination, uh, neuro-linguistic programming. Uh, it's called the circle of excellence. And um, again, we're using our imagination to generate positive change. So what we do, it's very simple. You can, you don't have to stand for this, but if you want to do this at home, and I will, um, or after this uh, workshop, I'm going to send you the, uh, the kind of the quick guide, the cheat sheet for all the steps that you take for this. So you don't have to memorize all this, but you can either sit or stand. It doesn't matter because again, we're using our imagination, but if you like, you can go ahead now and, you know, identify a state of excellence. Maybe it's confidence, uh, you know, joy, happiness, satisfaction, contentment, whatever it is that, that you want and identify that state. Um, if you don't think that you have the resources to generate a state like that, then imagine somebody that does. Imagine somebody that does have that. Right? But just simply imagine 
that state, that confidence, love, joy, happiness, contentment, whatever it is. And, and then pick an anchor word. And I like to use the word yes, right? Or you can use hell yes, or whatever you want, right? But, but yes is a good one. It's an anchor word that has some positive connotations to it. We're going to use that in a minute here. And now just imagine, you can close your eyes for this and just imagine that there's a circle in front of you on the floor. You can imagine you're standing in front of that circle and as you're there, choose a color for that circle and make it the perfect color for you. As you make that perfect color, maybe it's multiple colors, it's, it's totally fine. Whatever is the perfect color for you, imagine yourself or your role model possessing this state of, of excellence, of confidence, joy, contentment, whatever it is that you desire to have in the circle. So imagine yourself or your role model with this quality in the circle. And notice any colors, any shapes, any sounds or feelings associated with this feeling and adjust them accordingly so you can make them more clear, more vibrant, more uh, you know, louder. And in a moment, you're going to step into that circle. And as you step in this circle, you're going to allow yourself to fully experience this state, this powerful resource state that you desire. And now go ahead and step into the circle. Imagine stepping into that circle, fully embodying that, fully embodying that state of confidence, of joy, of contentment, of happiness, whatever it is whatever you've chosen, see everything through your own eyes now, hear all the sounds around you, feel all the sensations in your body and your skin, really intensify these feelings, make them powerful, make them strong, feel them more and more and more as you spin them faster and faster and faster throughout your body, throughout your being. Notice how good you feel now. And as you do say your key word, yes, 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 anchoring that feeling into that word, yes, 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 yes. As you feel and experience these wonderful feelings, and at the moment, you start to feel that you've peaked and you're coming down the other side. Go ahead and step out of the circle. Step out of the circle. And leave the feelings in the circle. And now go ahead and look into the circle. See yourself in the circle, embodying all of these qualities, these wonderful qualities that you want, this desired state, confidence, joy, happiness, contentment, peace, capability, surety, confidence adjust all of the attributes of it to make it clearer sharper more brilliant and beautiful and go ahead and step into the circle now that's right step back into that circle and as you do again embodying all these feelings experience them fully and completely see everything through your own eyes feel the sensations on your skin feel it in your body notice where it's building more and more turn up that feeling let it spin faster and faster throughout your whole body throughout your whole being confidence joy happiness peace contentment that's right and as the moment you start to feel that state start to dip over and peak go ahead and step out of the circle now let your subconscious mind fill in all the details as you move through this experience. You're going to jump into the circle one more time in a moment, but before you do, look into the circle. See yourself now. See yourself clearly embodying all of these qualities, noticing how you look, how you're holding yourself. Really see yourself standing with confidence and expression of confidence, maybe a smile on your face sense of peace, contentment, happiness, and joy, and go ahead and step one more time into that circle, step into the circle and fully experience these feelings, seeing everything through your own eyes. Now, imagine it happening now, only imagine it happening now as you hear all the sounds around you, intensifying these feelings and sensations. So you spin them faster and faster, saying your word, yes, 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 again and again. And then step out of the circle now. That's right. And allow that residual feeling to just move through your body, those wonderful feelings. And you can even imagine yourself now, imagine a situation where you could benefit from these feelings. Imagine an experience in the future or a situation anticipated or unanticipated. Imagine going through it feeling this way now. Notice how it transforms everything. That's right. Imagine a situation where you could benefit from these feelings, 
And imagine going through it feeling this way now. And notice how it transforms everything. Let your subconscious mind learn everything that there is to learn now. That's right. And as your subconscious mind internalizes and integrates all of these learnings, let it just simply apply this feeling, this learning to all situations that it could be useful and valuable for you to have this resource now. And from now on and forevermore, if you ever need this resource, you just turn inwardly to yourself and say your anchor word, yes, 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 to yourself, you can reaccess these powerful resources. And when you're ready and when you feel like your subconscious mind has integrated this fully and completely, allow your eyes to open, coming all the way back. Feeling wonderful in every way. That's right. And you do feel wonderful, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I'm going to send the um, the guide for this. You know, the steps that you can take, and you can actually take yourself through this exercise, and you can generate whatever positive states that you want for yourself. You can do them one at a time. You can mix them together. And again your subconscious mind, the power of your subconscious mind and your imagination can make it real, is making it real all the time. So why not make it wonderful? So um, does anybody have any questions about anything so far? How's, how's everyone's experience? Yeah. Yeah, good. Wonderful. So <clears throat> one of the things that, um, the main things that I want people to take away from um, any sort of work that we do together uh, in hypnosis is a deep connection with your, with your true self. And that's foundational getting to know who we really are, getting to know and understand and experience your, your true self, your true nature, your higher self is transformative. Normally we move through life and we identify, identify with our thoughts. We identify with our feelings. We identify with our limitations. We identify with our jobs. We identify with our all this stuff, right, that's assigned to us or that we picked up around our experience of life. Some of it feels like it just globs onto us, but most of it, honestly, we're just holding on to. And absolutely none of it is compulsory. Almost everything that we experience, uh, even culturally, from our religious upbringings, our education, all of it's arbitrary. All of the standards that we adhere to, they're not absolute, right? They're not who we are. They don't define us. Our success and our failure, those are benchmarks that are set by external factors, by somebody else. It's not, it's not who we truly are. In hypnosis, you are more able to, you become more and more able to let that junk drop. Let the unnecessary limitations, the unnecessary um, concepts 
drop away so that you can really get a sense of who you really are and that you, who you really are, is whole and complete, just as you are, is unconditionally loving. So I'd like to just kind of end today's uh, experience with um, a little bit of hypnosis and just a little bit of guided um, hypnosis just to experience that, get a little bit of a taste of that. So once again, as long as you're comfortable and safe, just take a nice deep breath. And on the exhale, let your eyes close down. And as you allow your eyes to be closed, just begin to relax your eyes and relax your eyes to the point where they're just so comfortable and so at ease, they just won't work. Relax your eyes now to the point where they're just so at ease and so comfortable that even if you tried, they just wouldn't work. And once you're satisfied that they just won't work, just stop trying and send that feeling of relaxation, send that hypnosis from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Imagine it happening now. As that hypnosis moves from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes, down to your neck and your shoulders, and your arms out to the tips of your fingers. That's right. All the way down to your feet, all the way down to your toes now. That's right. And now imagine Allow your subconscious mind, your powerful subconscious mind to again, imagine yourself in a powerful place, a magical and mystical place where you can begin to generate all of the resources that you need. Generate all of the positive changes that you are ready to make now. Simply experience it happening now. Trust that it's happening now, just as you trust your own breathing, as you trust your heartbeat. Imagine yourself in a powerful, magical, and mystical place where you're able now to generate all the positive, powerful changes that you are ready to make. As you begin to imagine all of the negative feelings, images, thoughts, emotions, or physical sensations, just beginning to lift up, to be able to rise up out of your body, just to be pulled out, dragged out, sucked out, drawn out into a white and golden light that's just surrounding you. Just imagine it. Only imagine it now. Any negative feelings, thoughts, images, thoughts, emotions, physical sensations that you've been carrying on to, carrying for days or weeks, months or years, coming up to the surface to be pulled out, dragged out, sucked out, vacuumed out into that light to be dissolved, healed and transformed in all the right ways is just release them now. That's right. Trusting that it's happening, whether or not you're consciously aware of it now. All the negative feelings, images, thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations that you've been carrying, all of the shit and the garbage everything that's obsolete that you'd no longer need just rising to the surface to be lifted up pulled out dragged out sucked out vacuumed out into that light the light of your pure being to be healed and transformed in just the right way is for you that's right 
And as you're enjoying this experience, to simply allow the sound of my voice to guide you into just the right state of openness and receptivity to be able to become aware of the presence of your true and highest self. Whatever that means for you. That's right. Just guiding you into just the right state of openness and receptivity to become aware of the presence of your true higher self. And if you find it helpful, if you find it useful, you can imagine beautiful, brilliant, pure white, golden light just streaming down into the top of your head, pouring down into your heart, filling your heart. So that light is shining now, radiating throughout your whole body, your whole being. As that light permeates every cell of your body with loving healing energy, grace, the unconditional love of your pure being and supporting you now. Every breath that you take, every beat of your heart, the joyful, spontaneous expression of life in each and every cell. Experience it happening now. It's that protective, loving light of your pure being surrounds you now. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Very good. Whatever you've learned from this experience now, whatever suggestions are in full and open alignment with your true self, your pure being, your highest self, you can act upon those now. Integrating these learnings deep into your being, activating more learnings, beneficial for your own highest benefit, for your own highest good, Everything that you've learned and experienced here now, allow it to integrate so completely into your subconscious mind that it's delivered effortlessly now into your past. Radiating into your past. So it's changing your relationship to the past in such a way that you're no longer limited in unnecessary or harmful ways. Releasing it now. Letting go now. That's right. In the same way, allow these learnings in the form of light to shine into your future now. As if that light could illuminate 
each step that you take along your path all the way into your future so that these learnings are continuing to generate new learnings and new resources, new shifts and changes. Experience it happening now, all the way into your future. That's right. Very good. Now in a moment, not just yet, but in a moment, I'm gonna count from one to five. When I reach the number five, just allow your eyes to open, coming back to normal waking consciousness. All of these learnings can integrate fully and completely into your subconscious mind, continuing to generate positive outcomes for you all the way into your future is number one, starting to come back. Number two, that's right, easily coming back. All these learnings integrating deeply into your being. Number three, wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit, coming back into the present, back into your body. Number four, take a nice deep breath, wakeful energy, filling your lungs, clearing your head, balancing your energies. Is number five, open your eyes all the way back, all the way back now. That's right, just feeling wonderful and refreshed in every way. That's right. 